because um, I've only been on tour for two years out of the 32 years of the Poland tour I have been going on. Um, and there are some devotees that have been on tour for 15, 20, 30 years. Um, but I think because I was surrounded by them, I felt very inspired and um, I'm hoping to just channel some of their Shakti into my, my talk today. I just want to ask, has anybody heard of the Poland tour? Um, this organized by Islam, so in the song, just raise your hand if you have. Nice and tall so I can see. It's a few of us, okay. Um, so this will be, this is actually a really nice service for me um, to be able to share uh, some of the, um, the glories, the miracles, and the magic of the Poland tour. Um, can you guys see the screen? Does it okay. I have no idea what it looks like. Hopefully it looks like the way it does on my screen. <laughs> Okay, so could anybody guess what Festival Indie means? Yeah. yeah, good answer, good guess. <laughs> Does anybody know what language it's in? Polish. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> um, so this year was actually a really special year because um, this year and last year was really special for me because it was the first and the second year being back on tour after the coronavirus hiatus. Um, which lasted two years. So before that, um, the Poland tour, um, the last one was in 2019. Um, and so it was, um, the way Shri um, Nusami describes it, it was like the phoenix rising from the ashes. Um, in 2019, it seemed like it had been like the largest and the biggest and the most professional that it had ever been um, until the whole world shut down. And so um, it was a great honor for me to be part of like this revival. And um, we hope that it continues to grow this way. And so let's just get into it. Um, okay, I'll also share that last year was um, the, the revival of the Poland tour. This year was also a special year because it was the first year that our um, commander in chief, Her Grace and Nandini Dasi, um, was not in attendance. And um, she had some health issues that she had to take care of. And so this year was also another magical miracle year because um, we were able to continue putting it on with her husband as a manager, his name is Shia Tan Prabhu. And he is um, the best manager I've ever had. Um, and so I just wanted to share some of the special, some of the special circumstances that we into this this grand tour um, last year and this year. So now let's get into a little bit about what um, Festival Indy in Poland is. I just have some notes here on my phone, so just, um, just bear with me. Okay. Um, so Festival Indy is organized. It's on your screen. It is changing on my screen. Is it changing on your screen? No, no, bullet point. Just the bullet point. Did you see that? Yeah. Okay, got it. That was like a little test. It works. <laughs> That's the only trick I think. Maybe when the video is playing. Okay. Um, so yes. Yeah, so the uh, festival Indy is is organized by Viva Cultura Foundation. Um, That's just a fun fact. <laughs> so 32 years ago, um, Indiduno Swami um, started the Poland tour with. A few devotees, just a handful of devotees. And then progressively it just grew and grew. And what that meant was that they were doing Sankirtan um, in different villages around Poland. Um, but the reason why he wanted to continue growing the store is because his, um, the soundtrack of his life, just like the Maha Mantra, the soundtrack of our lives, the soundtrack of his life is his instructions um, from, his, from his divine grace, A.C. Bakun after Swami Prabhupada, spiritual master. And those instructions were, preach boldly and have faith in the holy names. Whoa, that is a tall order, yes? Um, and so every, every day, every year, every moment in his life is dedicated to how to manifest this instruction in a tangible way. So one way is by continuing these annual festivals in Poland. So what we do is for two months straight, six days a week, 
we perform a festival in a town. And so it's a group of um, devotees from Ukraine, from Russia, from Moldova, from Macedonia, from France, um, from India, really all around Europe, some from America, <laughs> just a couple, <laughs> um, like myself. And um, we put on what really looks like the Festival of India that we have at the end of the Rathiyatra Parade. Um, raise your hand if you've been to a Festival of India at the end of a Rathiyatra Parade, as high as you can. Nice. So, what are so so some of our favorite? What are some of your favorite aspects of, of that festival? You can just shout it out. Q and A. Questions and answers. <laughs> <laughs> free food. The free food. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Entertainment. No. Entertainment and. Say one more. Seeing Prabhupada's disciples. Like... Seeing Prabhupada's disciples. Sweet. Yeah, so um, Rathi Yatra is actually one of my favorite times of the year. Um, so being able to do a festival every day for two months is pretty exciting for me, especially, um, like Prabhu said, being with disciples of Srila Prabhupada, um, having somebody cook for me for two months straight. Um, actually, in my case, it would be three months because one of my primary services is being, um, uh, be is being in the theater department, serving on the theater department. So. Um, we so one of those bullet points is a five-hour stage show. Um, so most devotees uh, spend two months in Poland. We spend three months in the theater department because we spend one month rehearsing, um, and then we move on to the um, and then we move on to. So we rehearse actually in the south of Poland. It's a small country, but we rehearse in the south of Poland. Then we move to the north of Poland with the other devotees for when this, for when this festival starts. Um, so yeah, this is basically what we do in a nutshell. We do Haina along the Baltic Sea coast, which is in the north of Poland. The north coast of Poland um, is the Baltic Sea. So we do Haina um, in the morning, and then um, we have a five-hour stage show, and we have tents all around the stage, um, which includes all our favorite tents, like face painting for the kids. I know, I know all the parents, they know the face painting for the kids. That used to be my service too. Raise really your hand if you got a face paint on me. I think only you know that you're <laughs> This was a long time ago. Now you're like probably taller than me. <laughs> um, and we have two prashadam tents. Now this is um, now these are actually not free prashadam because the whole festival is free. Um, but they're at a very like a very low cost, like minimal cost. Um, so we have a tent for prashadam where you can get like a full plate and then they have something called naishtiki, which are pancakes. So it's like a, like a popular popular dish in Poland. And so we have a tent just for that. People can get, it's like a crepe. You know what a crepe is? Mm -hmm. It looks like that. And you can fill it with chocolate or, um, you know, or cream or jam like that. And then we have a tent called La Moda Indi and that's our sari tent. And the guests can dress up in a sari, and um, and we have devotees running that tent, so it's very exciting for them to dress up in a sari. And then we have Shri Prabhupada's books. And we have a boutique run by the devotees um, where they can buy little like gifts and souvenirs, like a gift shop. And then we have a resident astrologer where he will be, um, though he will he will be charged. And he said, "This is like." For Everybody, I can basically predict what their life is going to look like, but for devotees, I never can. <laughs> okay, um, so I know one question people get, um, people ask a lot is why Poland? And um, it's a very small country, not a lot happens there, it's very low key. Um, people there are very simple. Why Poland? So, interestingly enough, um, Ajudina Swami addresses this question very often. And one reason is he says that Poland is a very pious country. It's one of the only countries where people still go to church on Sundays. And he also quotes this famous verse. And this verse is also found in a prayer book by Shri Prabhupada, so I'm just going to read it um, briefly. This is from the ninth canto, 15th chapter, verse 15. 
Therefore, the prajas, or the people in general, must take to the Krishna consciousness movement. The Hare Krishna movement, which is the sound incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Kali Kale Nam Rupi Krishna Avatar. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, has now appeared as an incarnation by his holy name. Therefore, when the prajas become Krishna conscious, they can expect a good government and good society. And they'll just run up to the Haridam party and start taking pictures with us. They'll start dancing with us. Um, so just to see like this like long snake of a Haridam party approaching your vacation um, out of nowhere is quite sensational. And um, yeah, I actually went to the beach once with that boy on Haridam. <laughs> And uh, it was the only day I could do it. And I so I got that experience of just kind of like being on the beach and like waiting for the devotees to come. And it was really spectacular. Like you just see like the devotees like emerging with um, flyers in their hands, distributing flyers. So it's pretty cool. Okay. So um, this is a day in the life of a devotee. Now I'll just kind of go as quickly as possible because I'm losing time. Um, so we have on our left a devotee on stage. We have next to him uh, a devotee chanting her japa backstage, waiting for the show to start. <laughs> we have devotees running the night nice the, the crepes tent, and then we have Jayatam Prabhu. He's um, resting on our Rathiyatra cart and watching the show, making sure everything's under control. <laughs> um, okay. So, this is kind of like behind the scenes of the Poland tour. Um, so, the, uh, so, let's see, what's the best way? I just grabbed whatever photos I could. So, in the bottom left, we have a classroom. So, all the devotees sleep in a school. And we cook in the school, and we take prasadam um, for breakfast in the school. And we... We go back home every evening to the school. We leave every and we do our rehearsals in the gym. Um, so on your bottom left, that's just a classroom. This is actually the classroom that I sleep in. Um, my stuff is right here. Do you see the cursor, by the way? Yes. Okay, this is my stuff right there. Um, this is the devotee who was dressed up as a as a grandpa in the last slide. <laughs> she um, she's been on tour for like. Oh, 15 years, I think. Um, from the time she was 13 or 15, and now she's 31. Um, and so we, we, there's these tables that we space out, and we have enough for one person. So that's me. Somebody, somebody grabbed a picture of me while I was sleeping and posted on Instagram. <laughs> no consent, but now I get to use it to give you an idea of exactly how we sleep. I can like unfold that little cushion thing and sleep on the yoga mat. It's just, it's very tasty. It's basically, if you put out your, your left arm, then that's how much space belongs to you, plus the, the height of your body. And then the chair, underneath the table is like my luggage and like, that's my gumsha hanging on like a knob on the cap. And he works um, from here. Um, yeah, and then here's the gym. This is where we have our rehearsals. And this is also where we honor Prashadam. And this is also where we have Mangalarti. So the deities are actually set up over here, outside the shot. Um, and then this is like the view of the back of the bus. We take the bus every day, back and forth. Um, and then somebody just found <laughs> a very creative way of taking a nap. <laughs> on the steps of the bus. So we just get very creative. Um, and this is all in the service of the Sankirtan movement. Um, okay, so. So at 7 a.m., the day starts. Actually, it starts at 6 a.m. because of the team of devotees that are up making breakfast for everybody in the kitchen. Um, and then um, some devotees, like a handful, like the brave, very disciplined ones, attend Mangalarti at 7 a.m. Um, I try my best. <laughs> it's very difficult. Um, and this is our altar. Um, this is our patron saint, Shinarada. And 
Let me just go through the schedule. So, um, at 7 a.m. we have Mangularity, at 8 a.m. there's a Shimabagwa's home class, at 9 a.m. is greeting the deities, and then there's breakfast after that. 10.30 a.m. is when the Harinam bus leaves, so you see the devotees like hardly finished scrapping down their breakfast, painting their gopi dots, um, and running to the bus. And then um, the festival crew is the ones that are not have, that do not have Harinam service. And they um, stay back, they would do like some cooking for the restaurant. We have a group um, of devotees that just serve on the restaurant. And then we have the theater crew. We often have rehearsals, like from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m., 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So we'll stay back for rehearsals. If we don't have rehearsals, some of us will go out on Hari Nam with the Hari Nam bus and then wait for the festivals to start in the evening um, where we perform. Then around three o'clock, after oh, then at two o'clock the festival bus leaves. So there's two buses that go out every day. Um, at two p.m. is the festival bus, and we get there. Some villages are like an hour away, some are thirty minutes away, some are two hours away. That's our furthest one. Um, and then once we get there, we take prasadam. We take prasadam like in a like behind the tents. And then um, then the festival begins at five o'clock. It's a five-hour festival, so about 10 o'clock, we're all boarding back on the buses and um, and heading back to the school for to sleep. So we usually get, sometimes we get home at 11, 10, 30, 12, like that. So it's a very long day. Um, yeah, so the first thing that happens in the day, um, you know, festival-wise, is the Harinam. Um, this is Magda Bhakti. She is one of my good friends and she is the lead dancer for the um, Harinam party. She's amazing because she's really good about um, getting people dancing. She will organize the dancing on the beach or in the town, wherever they end up. Um, and they have coordinated, synchronized choreography, the dancers do. So half of the Harinam are dancers, then we have musicians in the center, and we have balloon holders. Balloons are um, Indian Muslim's favorite part. They create um, a lot of attention. They're very attractive. They're um, they just look very professional. Um, and everybody um, walks in twos, two by two, so that we we look like we know what we're doing. <laughs> and um, people are very impressed, and it becomes very attractive. And then we have devotees on the outskirts of the Harinam file that are distributing flyers. They're running up and down the beach. They I've done it before. It's very tiring. It's um, really good cardio. Um, and they, I have so much respect for those devotees that are running up and down with flies. They're, they're like book distribution, actually, because they are giving people access to the festival. And at the festival, they um, the books are actually coming to life. So, let's see. Okay, yeah. So another thing about the Harinam is they distribute up to 12,000 flyers a day, and they are Harinaming for about three to four hours a day. Um, some towns, they get a break, they'll go for like an hour or two, but but yeah, that's every day. And and some devotees even have festival, uh, have, have service at the festival as well, like Kopi Dads or um, helping put it on site. Okay, so the crest jewel of our festival, we spend one month, um, I don't think we have any days off, so it's three days straight we are rehearsing, and um, we are putting on seven different shows, two a day, and in between those shows are smaller numbers, so let's just go through the schedule really quick. At 5 p.m. we have the opening bhajans, so they'll sing like Jai Radha Madhava, or they'll sing the mantra, or they'll sing... Um, like uh, like Rindavan, like that. Um, oftentimes, it's the, it's the mantra. Violinist, we have karta players, we have a bass player, um, and we have a madanga player, which are not shown here. Then, we have our beautiful Sankhya Dance Company. They are a professional dance company based out of Mumbai, and they love to dance so much. They love the Festival of India so much that they come absolutely for free. We pay for their expenses, and um, they spend three. They spend two months 
um, performing every day about two or three times a day. So they um, are usually like one of the first, they're usually one of the first, one of the last numbers, and then their service is really to give the, um, the theater department time to change in and out of our costumes. Um, yeah, they're wonderful. They have such great energy and personality, and they're very good friends. Then we have the first theater at 6 o'clock. The first theater is usually, a, if not always, a kids' theater. So we have two shows that are specifically for kids. One is a life-size puppet show, and the other, and it's called Nimai of Nadia. So it's, um, it's, it's inspired by um, Nimai's early childhood pastimes. And, um, and then we have and then we have um, maybe five shows that are just for adults. Like one of them is kind of like teen friendly, like family friendly, so that's the third one, and the other four are primarily for adults. They're, you know, they have more dialogue, um, but really they're all family friendly, but the one for adults is a little bit more, like it's just more mature, it's a bit, a bit better, um, developed in terms of like the, the storyline, um, the dancing is more advanced like that. Okay. Okay. Then we have uh, um, following the first theater, we have Nando Lao. It is a sing along for kids. So the kids are really excited being at the festival first of all but then so inspired by him with like two words with like two words that the kids can pick up would you like to hear them yes. <laughs> okay so we Okay, so we every single day we um, every single day we um, somehow um, by Jethan Mahaprabhu's um, weird, funny sense of humor. I got roped into the service of learning Polish um, just enough to lead this kid sing along, and um, and so this is why I pictured here. So this was I thought my year was going to be kind of like the same like last year. You know, I had my services and. But no, I had, um, like I said, when Krishna is pleased with service, he gives me more. So this was a huge endeavor for me. Um, every day I was like trying to add a word, but like a new word that to kind of build my vocabulary. Um, so, hey go fal nandalal. So we go, hey go fal nandalal. Hey go fal nandalal. Hey go fal nandalal. Hey go fal nandalal. So you they couldn't say it all at once, but if you guys can, so we would go, hey, go, pa, and then they would repeat. Hey, go, pa. Nanda, la. Nanda, And they would say, la, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of kids did get it, um, but the point was that they were engaging with the holy names. And then we would do like a dance. So one of our songs was, hey, go, vinda. Hey Govinda. So we go, hey Govinda. Hey Govinda. Hey Gopal. Hey Gopal. Yeah, so like that. We had um, different songs that that uh, corresponded sometimes with the with the theater that we did as well. So one of our dramas is Sita Ram. And um, so we would do Sita Ram, Sita Ram, Ram Ram, Sita Ram. So like that, they would repeat, and they would learn to dance too. And it was really fun. Sometimes we would break them up in half so that they didn't have to learn the whole thing. So one side, we would go, brava strona means right side, spieva means sing, sita ram, sita ram. So brava strona spieva, sita ram, sita ram. And the left side means leva strona. So we say leva strona spieva ram ram sita ram. Ram ram sita ram. So we go brava strona spieva. Sita ram sita ram. Leva strona spieva. Ram ram sita ram. Yeah, of course I have it reversed, so I'm facing you. But that's the idea. And then we would make a train. Um, so tera throwime pochon. Now let's make a train. And then they would all put their hands on 
each other's shoulders and wave, wave back to their parents. So it was really sweet and they, they got a kick out of it. Yeah, so then um, for five minutes we would have martial artists. Um, this was Chakra and this one he would actually like, mm -hmm. this one he would actually throw up in the air and catch it and he would um, keep it spinning while he was lying down on the ground. Um, and this one is swords. This is actually Guru and Teacher. So um, Dina Dayal has been on the tour for 20 years. And he finally, he's like, he was a brahmachari for like a millennium. And then he finally got <laughs> married and he was like, I'm retiring. So he passed it on to um, Prima Chandra. And so this was, yeah, this is a little, little detail. Then Sankhya will perform again for 10 to 15 minutes and we'll have a talk on the Bhagavad Gita. This is all happening while the, while the um, devotees are getting changed below the stage. Um, so Indra Swami will give a talk on the Bhagavad Gita really talking about like um, the presence of the soul, how um, the body is just 70% water, you know, and how um, like there has to be a soul enlivening the body and um, he'll, he'll talk about um, how like this is an ancient wisdom from India and how the sun shines everywhere. It doesn't discriminate what, which part of the country you're from, you know? So just in the same way, Vedic wisdom shines like the sun in every, uh, whoever you are, it's not bound by culture. So he gives like a really, um, a really relatable talk that that um, the Polish people can understand uh, without having any um, conception of, of Vedic knowledge. Um, and then what he'll do is he'll watch, just like I'm watching you guys that. <laughs> he'll watch and see who's the most attentive and then he'll offer them their garland. I will not offer you my garland. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to go back to God. <laughs> oh no, this is Maha, it's transcendental. But, and they, very touch. It's really sweet to see just their, their faces light up. And um, many people will actually buy a book. You'll see like the crowd will start to disperse during the lecture, like how they did today. Like we were like like ants like finding like the different corners of so but they'll like kind of disperse, they'll get prashadam, you know, they'll get their face painted. Um but but um but several people will actually buy books and and I think those are some of the magic moments of the tour is just seeing how um how this is just what people have been looking for, you know, this type of knowledge. And then he'll sign the book. And um, okay, I'll share one story. One time he said, he was like, he met, a, he met a family and they said, we couldn't wait to see you because we have your picture in our kitchen for the past 15 years. <laughs> just from coming to the festival. Yep. And, um, and so, yeah, this is his translator, Guru Kripa Prabhu, very sweet devotee. Um, and yeah, he goes up on stage with him, and he actually travels everywhere around the festival with, um, with Maharaj um, translating. Okay. Then we have our second theater, which is a, um, you know, like more adult friendly. It's later in the evening. Um, then Sankhya will perform again. This is actually an um, uh dance that they did. They're a Bharatanatyam dance company. Um, so obviously her and the Kashi Diva Prabhupada Maharaj. Uh, and then we'll have a final kirtan. Um, this is Premananda Kirtan. He's a trumpet player, but he's actually our musical director. So all of the music of all of our shows are, um, for the most part, have been composed and compiled by him. He's um, a music major as well. He, and then this is his best friend, Ethan Smith, who plays the saxophone. They've been on tour probably for maybe 13 to 15 years now. And we have a trumpet player. Um, and then we have synchronized dancers um, behind Gurudev. But really, we have Mangalabhati in the bottom, like on the ground on the stage, leading like trains and like she does like different like acro like um, aerobic moves, like like arms and like like shaking and like waves, and it's just really fun. And a lot of people will come out and join. So we have like, um, yeah, so we have, so most people are just kind of like absorbed in dancing, which is really nice that, that they can get involved. So it's really like a, like a well-rounded, full, full Krishna conscious experience. Um, and they say that in the spiritual world, every step is a dance, every word is a song, and it's a festival every day. 
So the last thing, um, Guru Day, after he gets off the stage after his kirtan, all the children, all the women, and all the men who are still left standing after his five-hour show are invited onto the stage, and the devotees will come handing out saris individually and wrapping them. So the girls get wrapped in a sari. Even if you're this little, we have to, it's very difficult trying to fold it in half. And, but they're so cute, like trying to hold up their saris and like waddling around. But, um, and then the, the men or the boys, they have the option to get their, their sari dressed in, in a dhoti style. Um, so at, I remember somebody was saying, I think um, one of my guys was saying, he's like, at one point, you can't tell who's a devotee and who's a Polish non-devotee. Like, <laughs> we all look the same. Um, and then we give those away for free. <laughs> so, um, our Transcendental Theaters are the seven uh, theaters that we rehearse for the first month of June. And the first one is Nima Ignatia. Can anybody see anything that stands out to them from this slide? A white beard. Can anybody guess who this person is? She was in your room, right? What did you say? She the girl in your room? No. This person with the beard? No, no, no. No, no this person with the beard. Like, what? What part he plays in this in this play? Advaita Charya. Advaita Charya Prabhu. Yep. So okay, let me explain something. When um. The thing is, is that Vedic knowledge, Vedic stories are very foreign to people that are not from India. So, um, what we do through the Viva Kultura Foundation and the Festival of India Tour is we take um, contemporary art, like European style dance um, or Western ideology, and we transpose it. So, we transpose Vedic wisdom and, and stories into contemporary um, art. And so this way, the language is almost a trans, having a translator, right? Um, and in this way, so when we use, when we, um, when we portray Advaita Charya as like Dumbledore, for example, then you kind of get this idea of like this otherworldly person, like Advaita Charya was, like he roared so loudly that um, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. And, um, and he was also like, he was also, um, like a guru or a teacher, right? So Dumbledore is kind of like this like kind of guru teacher figure, yes? Yeah? So it's kind of, it's relatable, it's digestible, it's understandable. Um, and then, uh, so this is our life-size puppet show. Um, it starts with the appearance of Nimai as a baby. So um, I'm playing Mother Sachi, and what the, the way the scene opens up is, um, it opens up with stars who are um, who are personified by dancers. Um, the show continues on with so this is Baby Nimai, and then the show um, progresses like it does like a rapid shift, a scene shift into Nimai as like a teenager or like a young boy, and that's him here, and we have our puppeteer. And we have Burphy, who's our dog. So you get so it's not like it's not it's not pure Chaitanya Lila, but because we're using names and we're using um, the Maha Mantra is the is the core message of this play. It's to show the importance of chanting the Maha Mantra. So we see that um, Nimai learns from Advaita Charya this mantra that um, that he can take with him wherever he goes. And so he goes on, he goes to the Jayakan forest. So here you see the tigers and you see the monkeys and the rabbits all playing and, and singing and dancing with each other. Um, and then you see this boat. He goes on a boat and you see puppets from all different parts of the world singing and chanting this mantra together. So you kind of get the idea. Yeah? We'll try and show. Just, just before you do that. Chemistry. Yeah. We have a BMW B10 LF wireless park right by the back door, which is our Prashadam serving area. If anyone has 
that vehicle if they could kindly move it. <laughs> X5, BMW X5.
Does any does any picture stand out? Any of this in this one? The elephant. Yeah, the the elephant. elephant. Can anybody guess who that is? Kubalai Pida, somebody said? This is Kubalai Pida, yeah. So this is the story of Akura coming to Vrindavan and Krishna having to leave the gopis. Um, these are the manjris here, Justin, pink and green. Um, they're wearing green hair because the manjris are, are rather random servants, right? So they kind of like blend into the Vrindavan forest. Um, and then this is Radharani in blue. These are the monkeys, Krishna and Balaram. And then if you see in the top, um, in the top right corner, we have like people dressed with like big hats on their head. Those are actually, that's actually the, the city of Dwarka. Um, and so they got really creative with these costumes. Uh, this is really an outrageous show. Like it's like, it's super chaotic, but the kids love it. Um, and I remember uh, really saying that in one time, like, you know, they had done the Lilanza, and then one kid from the audience started screaming, I want Krishna, I want Krishna. And so we can see that like the hearts are really being touched and and, um, and yeah, Krishna consciousness is really just like seeping into their spirits. Um, okay, uh, for lack of time, I think I will just go on. Um, to Sita Ram. So Sita Ram is a dance. It is purely dance. This is the Ramayan um, portrayed in contemporary dance style. Each scene is dedicated to a different major character of Ramayan. The first scene is to the, um, can anybody spot the, the trees? Can you find the trees? These are the trees here in the green dresses. So this is like the forest that when the play actually opens up with, with Ram being exiled and Sita running after him. And she's like, I'm not going to let you go alone. So they have a dance in the beginning. And then um, the, the trees are dancers as well. And then we get introduced to the monkeys. Hanuman and the monkeys are here and they have a really fun dance. Maybe I can show you. And then we get introduced to Jatayu, who's down here. This is actually a scene of Jatayu um, like leaving his body after the the fight with Ravana. We have a very graphic fight with Ravana, um, who's pictured here. And um, then we introduce Surpanaka. Um, this is Surpanaka here trying to seduce Rama. And then when Rama rip, rips off her nose, this is her anger here. Is she going by the uh, and then um, we have then we have uh, Surpanika, you know, um, trying to allure Ravan with with Sita's um, garment, and then we have Ram here. This is the deer that that attracts Sita. These are the Sita of protection, and this is Sita being dragged away. Um, this is Ram finding Jatai. Thanks, 
seeds are gone. I will dance with the trees. So they're in the um, the forest that they're being exiled. Does anybody know the name of the forest where they were exiled? actually come from the crowd so they come with like a loud like obnoxious like monkey in a monkey fashion um, and then they jump up onto the stage from the ground so you can hear the music changing and that's of course how you Monkeys are in the crowd kind of like picking at the audience members. They're very interactive and touching with the, with the audience members. Somebody just like, a monkey just put something out of mind. Like, now they're going to give it back. <laughs> Whatever they stole from somebody. You know, it's just the body, but just the body is death. And so at that time, um, and that's this scene right here, this is the soul. So we show how like the soul passes through bodies. Um, this is a death in the hospital scene when she finds out. This is like, and um, and the grandma of the beach in a way that's just like, you know what? Like, yeah, the soul, it, it, like, we, it is the soul is always living. Um, and she will teach her to whatever you play, play your truth, be who you are, um, be your, your true self. That's the most important thing about your music is your truth. And, um, and then we have like this victory dance at the end. Um, so I'm sure that I didn't have time for the video. No, no, it's okay. I won't play the video. Yeah, and then we have a contemporary the Bhagavatam. Um, this is Shutagal Swami. Or, or Shuka Dei Gosan. It's Prakshit Maharaj. And we have dancers just like depicting um, what happens after Prakshit is cursed to die. Uh, this is. And dance. Time is so short. Um, the girl goes and how um, fast time goes. So we also kind of give people like a contemporary um, way of, picture, of visualizing like how important time is and how we have to use it very wisely the way Brick did in, in just seven days. Um, then we have our folk style Usha Aniruddha, which is the story of Usha Aniruddha, um, the grandson of Krishna. And our Gita, the short one, 
Um, it's Bucky Marks Swami's speech, actually. We just kind of like expanded it a little bit. Um, and yeah, we just cover like basically the main themes that Krishna, oh, the, the mind is the friend or the enemy, and that's like, this is the mind here. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, we we'll use our bodies in physical theater just to the, um, just portray the, the concepts that Krishna is telling. This is Krishna telling Arjuna. Yeah. So thank you so much for your kind attention. I'm sorry we didn't have time for questions. I'm not sure how long everything was going to take, but.